Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. I want to talk to you about depersonalization and the feeling of being taken advantage of emotionally from a narcissist or a psychopath and the feeling of depersonalization that occurs as a result of this. Now, the, the narcissist and the psychopath, they have um, basically a physiological mechanism in their brain that causes a suppression of certain hormones, um, oxytocin and vasopressin, which are, are suppressed within their within their within their brain. Okay, so these are um, I believe that they're hormones, but they they cause a lack of emotional awareness of others. So it's it's literally a physiological condition that that they have. So a lot of people wonder, you know. Can they change? Um, you know, is there anything we can do? You know, maybe someday in the future. But you know, what a lot of people don't understand is there's—it's not only a personality trait, but a lot of it has a physiological basis, which causes them to be sort of disconnected from others. It, it, they have a, a very much a, a lack of a, emotional awareness of others. So, imagine if you, you know, liken it to your senses. You know, if if you were blind you know, you would walk into a wall because you had, you know, you were not aware of that wall. You could not pick it up with your senses. The same thing comes with the emotional body in the narcissist or the psychopath. They have a very limited emotional awareness of others. They literally do not have that ability. They do not have that sense. They do not have that um, kind of in their, in their wiring, in their equipment, if you will. And it's to a different degree in, in you know, the narcissist um, and the psychopath and of course you know when we talk about you know the psychopathic nature um, you know that's of course a, a more severe a more inflexible and a more pronounced sort of uh, display of this deficit within within the person and oftentimes these people are very well aware of it and they interpret it to be quite positive so in other words they have nothing holding them back they don't have this emotional awareness of others I want to help others, I want to provide service for others, I want to be kind to others, I have a humanity and an empathy for others. So they don't have that literal sense, they're, they're, they're deprived of it, they're, they're lacking in this. So you know, I myself not being a, a narcissist, because I, I tend to have a heart and empathy and emotion for others in a very pronounced manner. You know. Um, I have that organ. Now, you know, a narcissist would probably be able to describe what it's like to be a narcissist better than I, but imagine if you did not have that, you know, mechanism within you. In other words, if you did not have the sight, you know, the eyes to see or the hand to touch. I mean, they're they're lacking in this, so it's almost like a, a lack of an actual um, appendage, if you will. I, I try to use analogy to make it um, a little bit more Un easily to be understood by people so you can understand really what's going on and realize then how they tend to exploit and take advantage of people. And number one is that they feel that they're superior to others. Oftentimes they interpret it very positively and that they can just exploit others with having, you know, no sort of recollection or nothing holding them back. They, you know, tend to lack inhibition. You know, they are, are very inhibited and they tend to you know, lack in, you know, self-restraint to do this. So they'll be prone to a lot of these risky behaviors, taking advantage of people, taking money, stealing things, um, cheating on people, affairs. I mean, you name it, there's the gamut of it. Um, and they tend to create a lot of this kind of dis deep depersonalization in, in others. So they're able to manipulate others to such an extent that they do not validate their human qualities. In, in other words, they're able to relate to people in such a manner that it depersonalizes them. Just as you you feel, you know, when you're around someone who does not have sight, you know, and how they have kind of a different aura about them. You know, they're they're not moving as quickly. They're not, you know, running across the street. They've maybe got a walking stick. You know, maybe they're reading Braille, things of this nature. Well, the narcissist and the psychopath Kind of as a result, they and the 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 degree to which they're able to manipulate people through their words, through their actions, through their looks, through their body language, they have a very depersonalizing um, sense and a way of treating people. Um, for example, um, you know they oftentimes will lack 
certain emotional content in um, in their communication style. They lack a certain presence, a certain heart presence when they're with people. So when you're with them, you almost feel like they're not in the room. There's this deficit, a chill almost. And the way that they treat people, they oftentimes lack eye contact. If you don't connect with someone in the eyes, you tend to depersonalize them. Um, just like you've heard, you know, when infants are born, or maybe you haven't heard this, but you know, oftentimes they need, you know, that eye contact and they need that touch or, or they're not going to grow. They're not going to develop. I mean, if you leave them, you know, al alone in the crib and you were just to give them food, but you weren't to touch them, they are literally going to die because they need that touch. They need that human stimulation. Actually, you know, you're feeding, you know, you're feeding their nervous system when you touch them and when you look in their eyes. It's very, very interesting. There's been studies done on this and, um, you know, especially in psychology, you know, of, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, even monkeys, there's been studies done, um, where, you know, uh, these monkeys, would they rather be, uh, raised by this wire monkey without any cushion on it? You know, just like a hard wire, almost like a, uh, almost like a, um, clothes hanger or a teddy bear. And the baby monkeys will always go to the stuffed teddy bear because it's, it, it, it's warmer, it has a sense of tension to them, it, it's, it gives them that, you know, that uh, nurturing quality and, you know, uh, as that relates also, it's, you know, a human quality to be touched. They'll often depersonalize through lack of touch um, or touching in inappropriate manners that will um, send the body in sort of a, a fear, you know, um, a fear or a fight or flight sim symptom. Um, and you know expression in your, your nervous system um, you know there are situations where they'll be very depersonalizing in other words they won't look at, at talk to people um, while they're in the room they'll constantly be uh, turned around and yelling at them this is very depersonalizing when you're yelling at people you don't look at them um, in the face you don't look at them in the eyes you know you're yelling at them you're turned around from them your body language is uh, very disrespectful um, even if it's not outwardly saying, I'm going to disrespect you, it's very disrespecting. Uh, there's been situations where um, the narcissist um, and psychopath will literally only like talk to people as a reflection uh, through glass or through a mirror. In other words, you know, you're entering a room and there'll be a window there and they'll be almost like looking at the window rather than looking at you and acknowledging you as a person. So it creates this, you know, especially when it's an ongoing, it's like you're not treated as a, a person. It's a very depersonalizing situation where, you know, it really starts to edge away in one's sense of being a, a person, meaning all the senses are there intact and engaged. And also goes to create a deficit in personality where the person really feels like they're missing something. They feel very... Um, you know, uh, sort of a, a misfit and almost, you know, like they're not belonging. I um, mean, it's oftentimes created by the way that they've been mistreated. And the narcissist and the psychopath will also actively divest, which means to separate someone's sense of their own power, rights, or possessions. possessions. So they have a way of divesting people of these very things, not giving credit to you where credit's due. Not acknowledging, not acknowledging you for the positive things that you've done, or treating you with superficial uh, suspicion or jealousy for the things that you have, even though they're no big deal. I mean, they'll they'll be jealous of, um, you know, one like tiny little thing. I mean, that you have. I mean, it could be a candy bar, and you know, oh, so you got a candy bar. I mean, that's an example, but that's the sort of, sort of. Uh, maniacal way that they have of sort of depersonalizing and manipulating people to get under underneath them and sort of uproot their own sense of self-care, self-worth, um, ability to govern and uh, trust their own instinct and intuition. They'll try to sever, cut off that very ability that comes within the person, which is to be self-navigating, at peace, um, knowing and being comfortable within themselves and their environment, they have a way of disrupting this very connection, which is extremely, extremely dangerous. Um, and dangerous meaning it can upset your life. It, it can separate you from your ability to take care of yourself. Um, it can dismantle organizations. 
um, when this is done on a large and uh, deep level um, where people are not you know giving contribution they're treated like a number they're treated like a robot this is dehumanizing um, and it's it's depriving you of your personal quality of your connection and your ability to speak um, and express yourself so very much you know they will try to deprive you of that very ability or you know um, reprimand you for trying to be happy or express your positive emotions or even just being yourself um, that again would be coming into your own power which is not what the narcissist or the psychopath wants it wants they want it to be only their power period end of story I mean they literally work to annihilate people and it's very toxic to be around um, and very depersonalizing meaning that you know you feel separated from all the very qualities that make you you and make you wonderful and make you give you the ability to succeed and prosper in life so they try to actively uproot it and sever that really connection within you which is um, it's very it can be very crippling and so thus you need to get away from people who are creating that sort of feeling within your life and I do have quite a bit of videos here on recovery and how to heal from that um, particularly the recovery notebook and how to utilize and surround yourself and engage your senses all of your senses with more humanizing sort of energizing and uplifting input because these people have deprived you of that input they've deprived you of the positive eye contact um, the positive touch, the positive sounds, the positive feels, the positive sense. So I definitely um, go into that and I can go into more videos if you like on how to surround yourself with those sort of comforting, uplifting, energizing and personalizing sort of experiences so you can begin to get more comfortable in your body. Uh, um, and so please look at my video library here and um, look at some of those titles and I can also elaborate that on those topics in future videos. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos help. Please uh, become aware of these situations and protect yourself. Do not um, give the attention and your time to those people who are depersonalizing you, uh, uh, who are in your, uh, who are in your life. Look at ways to encourage and be around people who are more humanizing, who are more comforting who are more genuine to you so you can begin to come back to your senses and heal. Peace and harmony with you here today. Please share, please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussions, and support.